Awesome. Thank you so much, Frank, for all of the details of everything that's going on in Clayton County. Uh, greetings again, all of you Clayton County residents, leadership, elected officials, and major stakeholders. I'm Tracy Roberson, and I am very, very excited to have this opportunity to share with you this Saturday afternoon. And I definitely thank you for taking the time to come um, with us today to review the plans for improving extending and building out the complete transit network, which will serve the citizens of Clayton for years to come. So just a little bit of background, MARTA has been diligently designing new recommended transit investments in Clayton County. And this presentation you will see today will focus on the proposed recommendations from the Clayton County Transit System Plan. These proposed transit investments have the potential to serve and benefit more than 260,000 residents and major employment centers of Clayton County, as well as others in neighboring Fulton, DeKalb, Fed, and Henry County. So in this presentation, I will explain the purpose of the Clayton Transit System Plan. Um, discuss the previous community engagement efforts, which helped MARTA to frame these recommendations. We'll also compare MARTA's, um, what we call pre-COVID MARTA service with the proposed um, recommendations. And then we'll give you all an idea of um, what are the next steps to complete this process. So let's go ahead and get started by um, just having an opportunity to just talk about what is a transit system plan. So this transit system plan actually involves exploring various transit improvements and providing solutions to improve Clayton County's transportation, mobility, accessibility, and connectivity to the Atlanta region, while also providing greater access to jobs, providing congestion relief, environmental benefits, and bolstering economic development within the county. The Clayton Transit System Plan is designed to create a 30-year vision for transit improvements, which address the future needs of the county. This plan creates a list of prioritized transportation projects and identifies um, those which fall in what we consider a short range and then those that fall mid to long range. And it also offers a redesigned and improved bus network which will complement the two high capacity corridors, one serving the eastern side of the county and one serving the western side of the county. And we do also have some new elements that we are introducing. In particular, this plan um, um, features the addition of mobility hubs um, to the transit network, along with the addition of high capacity service. And when we talk about high capacity service, we are referring to several elements. We're talking about arterial rapid transit, which is denoted as ART, bus rapid transit, which we call BRT, and commuter rail, which is coined CRT. <coughs> so let's go ahead and um, take a look at some of these um, new elements in a little bit more um, detail. Um, next slide. All right, great, great. So um, the first element I want to talk about are the mobility hubs. Um, Frank had an opportunity to share a little bit and um, you saw that the Justice Center hub has recently opened um, just as an explanation of what the uh, mobility hubs are. Um, they are small transit stations that may be easily integrated within the community, and they actually offer connections and transfer points to multiple um, transit routes that connect there. Uh, mobility hubs may also have additional features like ticket vending machines, um, bus shelters with passenger seating, trash receptacle, and some may also be accompanied by um, park and ride spaces as well. So the next element, uh, I'd like to um, introduce and share is arterial rapid transit. So better known as ART. This is a type of enhanced transit service consisting of a network of fast and frequent transit routes on high density mixed use corridors. ART um, is uh, useful on corridors that's such as US 41 or Tara Boulevard in Clayton County. Some of ART's characteristics include more frequent service, 
with buses arriving every 15 minutes or less, operating at higher speeds than the local bus, transit signal priority, enhanced stops, and queue jump lanes. Queue jump lanes are um, short, um, dedicated transit only lanes that allow for the buses to enter the traffic in a priority um, position before the regular vehicles can enter into the traffic. And all of these features that I've shared um, really helps um, to improve the overall bus travel time. So another element um, that's being um, proposed that um, we are considering as uh, new to Clayton is bus rapid transit or BRT. And this bus mode um, uh, is designed to offer many of the same benefits that you um, see in rail, but it can be constructed at a much lower cost. So to reduce the impacts of congestion, BRT vehicles may operate in a designated transit lane for buses only. And this also allows for higher speeds and fewer delays than the regular bus service. As mentioned, um, BRT infrastructure is definitely much, much less expensive to build as compared to um, train. So another feature is that BRT vehicles are often articulated and this allows for a greater capacity. We know that uh, we have high ridership in the Clayton area and with the BRT and the articulated buses, we can move uh, people, a greater number of people um, at a faster rate. And also these buses are usually more stylized than the regular local buses. They usually will have their own special um, vehicle branding. So like ART, the BRT frequency is also um, typically 15 minutes or less. And the distances between the stations are typically greater than the local bus service. That's another feature that allows the buses to move um, much more rapidly through the corridor because you don't have as many um, bus stops. And overall, uh, the bus rapid transit is fast and frequent, and it definitely provides a very, very uh, much real like um, user experience for the customers. So um, let's just go ahead and um, take this time to share um, public and stakeholder engagement. Um, because we definitely did not do this in a silo. Uh, we began the Clayton Transit System Plan back in 2018 and have used a number of methods to engage stakeholders and the public in the creation of the plan. Um, input was received from citizens during open houses and public meetings. MARTA received input from advisory committees such as the Clayton Citizens Advisory Group, um, we got input from the stakeholder and technical advisory committees, um, as well as organizations such as uh, the Chamber of Commerce, Organized Clayton, Clayton State University, and many, many, many more. Um, additionally, MARTA has been briefing the Clayton County Board of Commissioners on a consistent and ongoing basis. So we have received input from a broad base of stakeholders to create and design the recommendations. Um, I do want to say that MARTA and Clayton stakeholders, um, including representatives from each and every jurisdictions, we work together hand in hand during multiple um, workshops in um, 2018 and 2019. And we use these hands-on workshops to get real data to get a real clear understanding of the needs for the transit riders in Clayton. And all of this um, input has led us to the recommendations that you will see here today. So let's take a moment to compare what we're calling the existing MARTA service to the proposed transit system um, recommendations. So we are calling um, what you see here on the uh, map, the pre-COVID program bus network, um, which consists of nine routes. Again, we're calling this pre-COVID because as you are aware, uh, several uh, reductions have been pl uh, 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 placed that Frank spoke about earlier. Um, so uh, once MARTA returns to full service, there will be nine routes. Um, so. Also, you will see here that routes 197 and route 198 are shown with an asterisk because these two 
were slated to be implemented in August, but due to COVID, they have been delayed. But immediately following COVID, we will have routes 197 and 198, which will bring us to the full pre-COVID network of nine bus routes. So that is what we have, what we're calling what we have today. Now let's move on and let's look at what is being proposed. So let's talk about phase one of the proposed recommendations. So for phase one, we are looking at two ART routes. Two ART routes have been created to offer greater mobility to Clayton County. The first ART route will connect the College Park Marta Station to the South Lake Mall area via the city of Riverdale. And the next ART route will offer enhanced um, transit service from East Point Marta Station to the Clayton Justice Center. Uh, and that is mostly along US 41 or um, Terra Boulevard. So the next thing we'll take a look at are the nine completely redesigned local bus routes. So the redesigned bus routes will continue to serve Clayton County, but will offer greater frequency um, than the current local um, bus. Now, I'm going to ask Jennifer Hibbert. Um, she is with the MARTA consultant team. Jennifer, if you could take a moment here and just um, share some of the operating characteristics for the nine redesigned routes before we move on, please. Sure. Thank you, Tracy, very much. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, hear you loud and clear. Okay. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure. Um, so I'd like to detail, as Tracy said, I'd like to detail some of the local bus service that's being proposed. The local bus routes have been, as she noted, redesigned to complement the high capacity transit projects as well as offer more frequent service. Um, and Route 191, I'll start with it. Route 191 would operate from a mobility hub um, that Tracy mentioned earlier, that's one of the new elements. Um, it will offer service from a mobility hub located in Forest Park to the Clayton County Justice Center mobility hub along State Route 85, Flint River Road, and US 1941 or Terra Boulevard. Let me bring in Route 192, uh, would operate between the Forest Park Mobility Hub, the Justice Center Mobility Hub, and Lovejoy along US 1941 Terra Boulevard, and will offer circulator service through the city of Lovejoy. Route 193 would operate transit service from the Forest Park Mobility Hub to the Justice Center Mobility Hub located along Forest Parkway and State Route 54 or Jonesboro Road. Route 194 would operate from the Forest Park Mobility Hub to the Justice Center Mobility Center running north along US 1941 Terra Boulevard for a short distance to Charles W. Grant and then into the International Terminal at Hartsville Jackson International Airport. The route would then serve the eastern side of the county stop at a mobility hub that's proposed for the South Lake Mall area before finally ending at the Justice Center Mobility Hub. Route 195 is an east-west route serving the northern section of Clayton County, passing through the Forest Park Mobility Hub on the way to the College Park Mobility Hub. Route 196 would operate service from the College Park MARTA station to a new mobility hub in Riverdale via US 29 or Roosevelt Highway Old National and then Riverdale Road. Route 197 is also primarily an east-west route from the mobility hub in Riverdale to the Stockbridge area traversing through the central section of Clayton County. Route 198 would operate service from a mobility hub in Riverdale to the South Lake Mall mobility hub via State Route 138 and 54. And finally, Route 199 would act as a circulator loop from the South Lake Mobility Hub to a park and ride lot that's located in the Stockbridge area on the eastern side of the county. And Tracy, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to talk a little bit more about these mobility hubs that people have heard me mentioning a lot. Awesome, thank you so much for the details on how the routes are going to be redesigned. So um, again, we, in this first phase, we do have four new transit facilities. This includes three mobility hubs, one in Forest Park, the South Lake Mall area and one at Clayton Justice Center. And we also have a parking ride lot in Lovejoy. 
The South Lake Mall and Clayton Justice Center mobility hubs will offer additional parking for transit patrons. Additionally, a new park and ride lot in Lovejoy will also allow transit users from the southern section of the county, along with people who are traveling from outside of the county, to quickly access the redesigned um, transit system in Clayton County. So that concludes um, phase one. Now we're going to take a look at what we have coming as part of the phase two. So during phase two, the College Park, the South Lake Mall ART route will be upgraded and converted to bus rapid transit service. This will be done with the addition of transit only lanes along portions of the um, high capacity transit route to allow more reliable service and permit travelers to see more travel savings time. And then we will also introduce a new ART route, which will be implemented from Riverdale to the Clayton Justice Center along State Route 138 and US 41. Now we will also during this phase have additional transit facilities to be added. Um, there will be a mobility hub with parking in Riverdale and a park and ride lot in the Stockbridge area located adjacent um, to I-75 and we are calling um, this location um, Clayton East. Um, Jennifer, would you like to share a little bit more about the um, um, hubs overall? Sure. Um, so each of the mobility hubs you'll see has been placed strategically throughout the county to offer greater operational efficiencies and also expand the transit spatial coverage in Clayton County. At least two of the routes will circulate through each of the mobility hubs, but most of the hubs will have four routes circulating through them and some have even up to six routes passing through them. That has allowed us to shorten the routes, having them terminate at the mobility hubs. So you can tell that these mobility hubs will be an important part in the future of the redesigned transit system in Clayton County. Awesome. Thank you so much for that. So uh -huh. that concludes um, phase two. So now let's look at the full suite, um, including phase one and phase two. What you see here um, represents the full build out of the plan. So in totality, we are introducing one BRT route. We are introducing two ART routes. We are also including a proposed high capacity corridor, which is along State Route 54 and along the Norfolk Southern Corridor. And uh, this is under analysis for the commuter rail, which I mentioned earlier. Now, I know a lot of people want a lot of details about the commuter rail, um, but that is still moving forward and we need an entire hour or two to sit with you to give you those updates. So definitely more to come on that um, soon on the analysis that's been complete and the process that Frank spoke about earlier. We are moving along that um, uh, federal process for commuter rail. The other portion of the complete plan are the nine completely restructured local bus routes that we have shared with you. And there are a total of six new transit facilities, including both mobility hubs as well as parking rides. So with that, I'd like for us to take a side-by-side -side look at what we have uh, now, which we're calling pre-COVID versus what we have when we have the full build out of uh, phase one and phase two of the transit system plan. So you can see here, um, the design will be much more robust than we have today. So if we can go to the next slide, we'd like to compare and contrast the existing um, versus the proposed. So if you take a look at the existing, all of the existing bus routes currently terminate at a MARTA station and there are no designated transfer facilities for intra-county travel. And MARTA does not currently offer high capacity transit service within the county. Uh, the frequencies for local buses vary, but a lot of them can be up to 60 minutes. And generally MARTA only offers one route per corridor. And finally, if a transit passenger only wants to travel within the county, they must transfer several times to reach their destination. And that means lengthy trips for uh, intra-county travel. 
And that has definitely been taken into consideration for the new proposed um, service recommendations. So if we look at the proposed service recommendations, uh, we see that the new bus routes um, actually terminate at the mobility hubs and at motor rail, motor rail stations. This allows the bus routes to be shorter with more frequent service. The recommendations also feature up to four mobility hubs designed for quick, efficient transfers. The system plan will introduce three high capacity, um, high frequency BRT and ART. And um, the local bus frequencies are actually cut in half or greater, which I, I know that is definitely something that everyone is um, very, very excited about. The new recommendations co consolidate service along certain corridors at the hubs, and the proposed recommendations offer a ability to transfer to the motor rail um, at a very higher service frequency. So the proposed recommendations also now have some similarities to the existing. So if we look at the similarities, um, the geographic reach um, at, as the existing is very similar. And as well, the proposed recommendations may be implemented with a similar operating cost as compared to the existing which means um, basically um, you'll get a better Clayton transit network with minimal financial impact to MARTA and Clayton. So with that, um, I'd like to share some next steps. So we are going through the process now of sharing this information with the public, with you, Clayton County. We have gotten information and input from you at the beginning. Now we are sharing and we still want to get your feedback based on the recommendations that we have uh, come up with and provided to you today. Now, this is not your only opportunity to see this plan. In fact, we are coming back and we are going to have uh, additional um, engagement. We are going to be gathering additional information in October. And after that, once we get all of the information, we will finalize this plan and move it along for um, final approval through MARTA's um, executive management. Next slide. 